You know, when my dad died when I was 14, I saw, I saw it coming. He got sick. He had alcoholism. So I saw it. Like what, he had, which made it? What, what he had is, cirrhosis. He had hep C that turned into cirrhosis. How does that, you just, they start feeling bad and looking back? Oh, you well, wonder like I, who my gets it and who doesn't. My grandmother called my mom and she's like, hey, uh, Gary's terminal. And my mom was like, oh, shit. And so my mom sat me down. And she's like, listen, we have enough money. I can either send you out to see him one last time or you can go to his funeral. What do you want to do? And I was like, I'll go see him. And my sister had not talked to him since she was 16. And she was 26 at the time. And she was like, I'll, I'll go out there with you. And she went and made peace with him and stayed by his side until he died. Was he apologetic? Did he hit a buzzer, did he hit a buzzer beater? I don't know. I think he did. With I think you, he though? No. No buzzer beater. No. He dribbled out. He dribbled out, <laughs> dude. Dribbled. He rolled the ball so the clock <laughs> ran out. You know what I mean? You're like, come on, pick uh, up the ball, dude. You're fuck. letting the fucking clock run out. Yeah, Threw he the just, ball up? Yeah, yeah. He did the fucking thing out the top. <laughs> he just heard the buzzer, and you're like, fuck, there was the red around the hoop. Oh, so you're like, fuck. well, there ain't ever gonna. But yeah, that was like, that was the end of that. Stood on the scores table. <laughs> banged on his chest. Put it his was, fucking dude. jersey out. It was it was brutal, and it, it, but you know my sister being there to be like, yeah, we fucking we knew this was coming. How demolished were you? I was pissed because so I was like, dude, we could have fucking fixed some stuff. Like, could I, you have though? I think I could have told him some shit. I could have been like, man, what the fuck, dude? I loved you. You were my guy. Because like I love my mom, but my dad was like fun as fuck. Yeah. So well, he's an alcoholic. Yeah. <laughs> so when I would see him, it would be a blast every time. So I wanted it to be like, dude, you were so fun. You couldn't have dadded a little. You couldn't have given me one or two dad things. Change Do you tire. think you would have said that? I think I would have said something like that. When was the last dad thing you guys did? Oh, shit. I mean, when I saw him when I was 14, he was so sick he couldn't get off the couch. He was like dying on the couch. When I was 12, he was kind of like, I, my aunt sent me out there as a surprise. And he was like full <laughs> alcoholic boat mode. He was, lived on a boat. Well, he lived near a lake. So it was lake people. What is it with lakes and dirt bags? It did. It, it's it, unbelievable. It is. It's like the ocean's too classy. It is. They're like, ew, changing tides. <laughs> I need stale water that's oh, that's fuck. dead. But I went out there and it was like an annoyance. He was like, eh, fuck. Yeah. Right, I got the kid. What do you want? You know? And he was like, I stayed with him and his girlfriend and her kids. And it just was like. For how long? Like two weeks, and I was just like, dude, this sucks. I gotta say, everything you've told me about your childhood, I fucking hate. Yeah. And I, I don't, I hate it because I'm mad. Yeah. It, that's, I think that was like another thing of mine. It was like, I was angry. I was, and I did, and, but, I, but I was angry in the way of like, I wasn't, I had a mom that she would tamper that down. She'd be like, don't you fucking get mad. Yeah. She'd be like, I'd work my ass off to put you in school and give you clothes. Don't you fucking get mad. And you're like, I am mad though. Yeah, and like then, a dog uh, on know, the dog whisper who's trying not to yeah. do the thing that <laughs> you're like try not to bite the chicken. And, and then I got into therapy, and my therapist was like, "Yeah, you're allowed to be mad. You can, you can, you can acknowledge that anger, and like, you actually have to let it go, or it's gonna fucking kill you." Did you ever see the movie This Boy's Life? Too close to home. You never watched it? Too close to home. Started you knew watching inherently it. not. Started to watch watching it. it and was like, "This is too fucking close." <laughs> he needed a father. That's the one with uh, De Niro and it's DiCaprio. De Niro and DiCaprio. It's DiCaprio's too first close. lead, and it's there's a moment in the movie that I still like DiCaprio because of where they basically like are free. Yeah, and DiCaprio does like, like sort of. Victory. I might have to watch it now. That it's I'm... like in the last fifteen minutes. Yeah, he just does a thing that's so what you do. Yeah, when you get fr like he sh is like shaking like a little kid. Yeah, it feels. I'm you know like the like as far as the freedom goes. When I was finally able to like move out and stuff, I was like, oh. I told Chappelle to watch this boy's life, and it, I was like, it's real. And he thought I was kidding when he watched it. Like, what do you, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah. no, this is kind of how it's it went down. White angst. <laughs> yeah, it's, well, this is what we're going for. This is where Papa Roach so is from. So much attention. <laughs> like, there's not going to be any marches for what the white kids are going no. through. Just know that we're, we have our own problems. Yeah, we have, we have a, a, a form of suburban anxiety or just anger in a weird way. But it really like, um, yeah, when I was a kid, I wasn't allowed to be myself a lot. I'd, I had to be... For my mom, I had to be like a good yeah. soldier. Yeah. Right? That yep. was the feeling. Like, be a good soldier. Yeah. Like, soldier through this. Be good. Yeah. And then it, I was like mad because I was like, I felt rejected. So I was being a good soldier, but then I also felt like 
well, I'm not getting any of the benefits of like, good job, add a boy. I yeah. wasn't getting any of those. I'd get them occasionally for my sister. Yeah, but she has to like call. Yeah. And Maybe then, on Sunday you'll get and it. And then she got killed in a car accident when I was 16. And so I was just like, oh, substances. <laughs> so, come on. Yeah. Come on with this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do you, what do you, come on, this is a family podcast. <laughs> yeah, sorry, guys. My dad said he loved me for the first time in his life, uh, like a millisecond before he uh, started to completely mentally unravel and like the next day was hospice and he was just a zombie. It was the, it was maybe one of the last sentences my dad uttered was I love you. And he never said it. Did it mean, did it, I don't want to say, did he mean it, but did it seem? He he went, I love you, psych. (laughs) (laughs) Give me that Oxycontin. Uh, (laughs) But but you know what I mean? Like. (laughs) <laughs> what you think it was perform- are you asking no, it wasn't no, performative no no meaning you know mm. when people go i love you or like did oh it no no seem like well, you, he finally you. understood it no i'll tell you how it went done and it was a feeling he didn't die in the hospital we we went he he spent the last year of his life in 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 bed in the house he didn't want to die at the hospital he's like i don't want to fucking die at the hospital i want to die at the house so he was in his like hospital bed in his room and like he was just always watching the news. My dad was just always like mainline MSNBC. He was just always watching the news. Still, even now. I just, I landed and he was re, he looked like the worst I've ever seen him in his life. I was like, this is the end. Uh, he looked like skeletal, like a Beetlejuice character, like Tim Burton. It is Jim crazy. Henson, it's crazy what just illness. His, and- uh, just his bones and skin. Remember that Mr. Show sketch where the they go to the burn victim? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Get on. It's obviously incredibly funny, but like there's something to no, that. No, it was hilarious. I was like, Dad, you still got it, Can brother. Can I film this? Can I make content? <laughs> no, it was. It looked like a Jim Henson creation. Yeah. It, it was like, I was like, oh, no, this is the end. This is the end. I was like, and I was like, and I looked at a picture of him a year ago when he collapsed and went to the hospital, and he looked like a million bucks with tubes hanging out of him compared to this yeah. this was like it was just like a skeleton man it yeah. was like whenever you see like footage of like um a famine in yemen yep. or ethiopia and you're like yeah. fuck humanity yeah. is fucked it was like that so i knew it was the end so i get in i fly in and i was like working all week i would like work monday through it was miserable i'd work monday through friday then i'd get on a plane land in 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 florida and f- on a friday night and go right to him and like just hang out there all weekend and then like sunday night monday morning fly back to work and it was tough. So I, I'm sitting there, and uh, I just got the impetus. I'm like, I'm turning off the fucking TV. Like, we never talk. He's very, like, emotionally repressed and hard to communicate with. And I was like, I'm just turning off the TV. Like, let's talk. I don't know. It's awkward to just stare at a, my dad and talk. Yeah. And I turned off the TV, and he just, like, looked over to me, and he smiled. And he went... And he had no energy. I mean, he's died on death's door. He just went, I love you. And I went, what? And he goes, I love you. I never meant to upset you. I love you. And I, I burst into tears. Of course. I burst into tears. And he goes, can you call my nurse? And he was almost like childlike. You know, when people start dying, they like unwind yeah. back into babyhood. And he goes, Call my nurse over. I was like, I go, I go to his nurse. I was like, hey, come over in the room. And he went to his nurse. He goes, and he started bawling, crying. He goes, why is my son crying? I just told him I loved him. And I was like, I'm crying because I love you too. You've never said it. And, and he was like, I love you. And I was like, I love you. We started like screaming it at each other. And it was primal. I have goosebumps talking about it. I'm like choked up talking about it. Balling, crying. We're both bawling, crying. His nurse almost starts crying. And then he went, and then like uh, it's the beats, we both calmed down and he looked over and he goes, oh, my two friends are here. And it was just me and him and his nurse. And I go, what? And he goes, my two friends, my two old friends from Haiti. I haven't seen them for, for, for years, they're here. And I go, dad, there's no one else in the room with us. It's just me and, and your nurse. And he goes, he was like, oh fuck. He gave me like a, oh fuck face. He was like, fuck. And then, uh, and then he was, and then it was just like, 
And then the next day, hospice started. It was kind of the, it was kind of like the last conversation I had with him. And, and then because he, he was so he couldn't sleep, it got to the point where his nurse goes, he spends the entire night screaming because he's in so much pain. He would sleep for like maybe an hour, yeah, and then just wake up and be like, ah, ah, ah all through the night. Ah, your like, organs uh, are just like, sounds like a monologue from the Eric Andre show. <laughs> If I'm honest, <laughs> me right. <It's>, yeah. <laughs> so we were just like, so it's hospice started, and then like you know, we had little, there'd be little tiny, th- you know, moments of lucidity, but not really. So uh, I don't know why. I My question, this up. okay, I, I think I connected. You said you were ready to receive love. Ah, yeah. So, so my my MDMA psilocybin session was a lot about that moment, and 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 my. Therapist, not the MDMA therapist, but my therapist was like, I think that that last conversation with your father healed your heart in ways that you never expected. And would uh, you agree? A hundred and ten percent. That's funny. What's the difference? Meaning, we all assume our dad loved. Well, I didn't assume my dad loved me, but but that I think I'm rare in that regard. What I'm wondering is what it. So you did you just kind of think like ah, it's kind of not a thing that the dudes like him fuck with. Like love and yeah, emotions. Yeah, my dad like was that. very aloof and absent throughout yeah. my entire childhood. You know what I mean? I felt ignored by my dad for mm. for uh, my entire childhood. So, uh, and my parents got divorced kind of out of nowhere when I was twelve. I didn't feel like my dad. You know, there's no extremes in nature. So I I, I knew he loved me. Uh, I just wish he was more present, mm-hmm. and uh, I wish that. Uh, Oh, he was more present, more active. Not and it's so, hard. Not so you probably, and, it's hard to, as much as you can intellectually go, yeah, he's a loop, whatever, whatever. I, it's hard not to take his lack of presence personally. A hundred percent. And so 100%. when he finally is like, hey, it really, it, did it feel like this, that was not personal? When he said, like, I'm sorry I let you down, it wasn't, I like, I really do love you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and also what helped was my dad was so he repressed his emotions so yeah. much, but he was repressive till the fucking end. When he looked like a skeleton, I was like, "How you doing, Dad?" He's like, "I'm fine. I'm great. Everything's why do you fine." Ask? Why do you? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> "Why do you ask?" I was like, "You're not fine. Yeah, you should be like, I feel like hell. Yeah, I'm incredibly sick and I'm on death's door." But it was like, yeah, everything's fine. That was my dad his whole life. So I was like, "Damn!" Even in this extreme state he's still that repressive yeah. and that that avoidant yeah and then you know and then you see family members showing up that you haven't seen in years so i was like i always resented my dad for not supporting me going to like into the arts because i went to music college and then i got into comedy and he was always like going to med school or law school he's a psychiatrist and uh, my uncle came in who i hadn't seen in years who's a musician been a musician his whole life he's in one of the most famous bands in haiti for like 55 years and, and my uncle turned to me and goes, oh, he would say that shit to you? He would say that shit to me all the time. Don't go into music. Don't go into music. Don't go into music. He's like, I don't know. And like, he was like, I could tell he was like, he was still like a little bit like, fuck your dad for telling me that. Because my uncle was the baby brother. He was the baby amongst yeah. uh, seven children. The baby docs. So, so, <laughs> baby docs, yes. <laughs> so uh, I was like, oh, it's not personal. There's a bunch of stuff came out. My friend was like, whose dad died. He goes, the secrets are going to come out the family secrets and it's all the same it's all the same thing it's all like the thing you didn't like him for he did it to me yeah just and then you're like oh why did i take it personal my dad is a human who is flawed everybody's parents are a flawed human being yeah you're gonna and everybody is going to be a flawed human being to their kids it's you i think we misunderstand how they're gonna be flawed because you wouldn't think you would think like uh if telling your son like to get a good job is like fairly typical immigrant et cetera, et cetera. but then it's like why did you do it to your brother why did it's just it becomes about the like a a, in some ways like a poverty of spirit in that regard yeah and not like personal to you it's just Mm -hmm. like because he's scared all the time Mm -hmm. and he's like putting it on other people yeah and so you felt so few catharsis in life but that actually sounds like one the yeah. your dad said i love you yeah on his deathbed yeah 
and 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 bald crying like a child about it and, and i don't i don't think i ever saw my dad cry until that moment yeah even when he got the oh no i i've heard him cry over the phone when radio, he, he got the it. cancer diagnosis i, I heard thought him, he won a radio contest I, <laughs> he was, he was four, on the radio he was i the heard him on, caller. <laughs> it was power 96 <laughs> miami's party station <laughs> i heard him cry over the phone when he got his cancer diagnosis i heard him kind of softly weep on the phone when he was telling me like oh, i have the, he had no money at the end he was really bad with money and he was like i got this little life insurance policy and like like he was prepping to die like i heard him like weeping but then like it was not only the first time i i, I he he told me he loved me it was the first time i saw him cry and it was like he was bawling crying it wasn't subtle so it was a really it was fucking intense it was one of the most intense it sounds like fucking it, but, wildly human yeah, it was wild. Like, what? And he's tiny. He shriveled small. Shriveled like uh, the the crypt keeper from yeah. from tales tales from the crypt. Yeah. That's what he looked like. Yep. Like and the ske every part of his skeleton you could see yeah. in different body parts. It's it's haunting to see your your one of your family members. In but that, that one of the weirdly most important moments of your life. One of the most important moments of life. Yeah. Well, my father apologized on his deathbed. He had put his war medals on his chest, right? So I, on his literally, literally all his on war his deathbed, on his, on his deathbed. So he said, "Get me my medals." Well, I was in New York about to do a show uh, with uh, Barack Obama, a cold open. Who he medaled? Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And um, the nurse called and said, "Your doctor, your your father doesn't have much time." And I, I said, all right, I'll, I'll be on a plane in the morning. I said, I'll, I, I'll find a way to, to, to get a plane there right now tonight. So it was the the Obama Halloween one. Yeah. Well, who is that under there? <laughs> and so my father still wants me to stay, because he wants me to. He wants to see me perform with someone who might be a, an American president one day. So he goes off his morphine. The next morning, me and Eddie, who's a big part of the book, uh, a cop, uh, fly down to see my father, and he has his war medals on his chest, and he tells what he won them all for and says that he realizes he had been a good soldier but a, a terrible father and that his sin on earth was that he had let his anger be more important to him than his children. Wow, did that do a lot to me, for me. And, 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 and I love you. Like, just that. You felt like, okay, I didn't imagine it. I, no, what I felt like was, you know, I had, a, like, I have a dad. And not, and like, yes, thank you for acknowledging what, yeah, what the reality it's of my life was. It's crazy what just a little, uh, a little humility from, because these you know parents are like gods you know yeah. just a little humility i was wrong yeah i let my anger be more important to me than my children and i I'm, I'm here i am now they're about to give me a shot and i won't be here anymore and i'm sorry and i'm sorry and i love you i'm like dude i'll give you the shot myself <laughs> <laughs> what was it what was he what was his anger he was in World War II and the Korean War, but it was it was mostly about World War II and the things that he saw as a soldier in World War II. Is it what we now call trauma? Yeah. And back then it was just like, I didn't like that. I think they call it battle fatigue. Yeah. But, but this is a guy that wakes up almost every night and he's, he's thinking about Adolf Hitler. That's what he's thinking about. That's what he doesn't stop thinking about, really. The stuff he saw nazis do didn't leave him yeah and and you know towards the end of his life he was you know he was afraid to go to church he was, he felt that he had killed people and what does this mean and 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 uh this cop eddie became friends with him finally got him to go to church he was, he was like dude these are nazis yeah they make furniture out of people man yeah okay and they were getting ready to do it to all of us. Yeah. No, I think about that sometimes. I think about like if there was a, I think about like that mentality, watch World War II 
documentary and you think about that mentality and I would have been fucking furious at Hitler. It's such an obvious thing to say. <laughs> like if you're, it's like, why are you putting all of us in this situation? Yeah. Because one or two things are going to happen when you go to war, you're going to turn and run mm -hmm. or you're going to get really mad at Hitler. <laughs> it sounds like, it sounds stupid, one of, but like, yeah, one of those two things. happen. Yeah. And it's going to make Hitler's going to make you do awful shit. Yeah. Even if you're an American GI. Yeah. yeah. Cause you have to, to stop him. Yes. Stuff that's going to come into your home in Melbourne, Florida years later. Yeah. When you're waking up in the night with a scream. Would he, Hitler do you remember is that? still there. Oh yeah. Hitler's still there. Was it a long, was it like, ah, what, what was the tenor? Yeah. It was it? like, it was like a five seconds and sometimes falsetto and sometimes strident. So you get that. That's got to make you feel a lot better. And have genuine uh, empathy. Uh, yeah. Did you have him? Did what was it like before that? Was it just kind of like ah, I don't know what happened? No I, connection. Got it. No real connection. What did what were his medals for? Um, uh, whatever they give medals for at war and war. So it wasn't like was it like I saved a guy at Guadalcanal? I did. Was it specific? I think there were ones for um, valor, meaning there were deaths involved. And then is your mother still alive at this point? No, she uh, she died shortly before he did. Same hospital and same hospice in Palm Bay, Florida. And what what was your what was that that one like? <laughs> that was like um, I said something like, "Nobody in this room knows who you are. Nobody knows who you are." And she said. You were always my good buddy. And I, some deep part of me said, easier, softer way? Back out of here. Going to be a lot easier to move on with your life than if you dove in here and turned this into World War III in front of all her friends. And I mean, it will rip you to pieces, and it won't mean nothing to her. So they do this funny thing. My friend Eddie's the cop from the Bronx, and he became in charge of security for Jeff ML at NBC. I mean, he's really had, I thought, a great, considered an illustrious career. But, you know, the, the, the people at the hospice encourage you to stay for us. To, for instance, sometimes they won't pass if their loved one's in the room. So we had to leave the room. And then my father would pass. So he passed, and we walked in. And he said, they said, uh, um, nobody goes to the other, other side unescorted, you know? And I remember saying that to Eddie. is like, Eddie, I noticed she didn't go into my mom's room when she died. He goes, yeah, because I knew she was going to get escorted. But I figured it was the other guy. I'm like, you really believe that? He's like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The devil. What my father called it verifiable evil, and that is, you know, your past disgruntled, your past troubled, you know, now this is fun for you. Hey, did you like that? Did you like that? Yeah, did you like it though? You want more? Don't want to work? Would rather watch videos of me grab assing with people? First of all, go up here to subscribe, and then go up here to uh, watch more clips. This is like when the weatherman says that there's a high pressure system coming in. Although I'm not really used to the green screen.